Okay, um, can I ask you to put your pens down? And we're going to launch from this into, um, well, something semi-new today. Um, and I wanted to sort of make it um, slightly memorable for you. So I want to um, put your pens out of your hands for a minute because so I want your concentration. Um, I want to bring your minds back to a simpler time. Um, a little while ago, actually. Um, I want you to have a guess, have a think, because I don't just wear an apron for anything, right? I want you to have a guess as to when you think a photograph like this might have been taken. Have a think. Have a think. Australia is close, but it was actually before that. Christmas. Even before Christmas. Have a, just, just have a closer look, okay? If you can see behind me, I mean, I, have a, I don't have a very big backyard, and that's a big looking backyard. Where does it look like I am? You're getting plumbing services done by Reese. Um, so think back, think back about 12 months, a bit over 12 months, actually. Are there any politically minded Let people me check the time. here? Oh, the election. This is, thank you very much, this is the federal election. So I was getting my, um, my democracy sausage on, okay? Now, I want you to think about this situation because it's going to be a little scenario for us to have a think about why what we're about to do with this um, is not just like interesting, it's not just something we can do, it's actually something immensely useful, okay? Um, my kids' primary school was one of the many that was hosting voting and therefore was trying to raise funds using a barbecue, right? So we have this question for ourselves, which is if we want to try and increase profit through this um, sausage sizzle, we have some choices that we can make about how we run this sausage sizzle, right? We can increase or decrease our profit by virtue of the choices that we make. And there's a very simple choice that we have all control over when you're running a barbecue like this, which is how much are you gonna charge, right? Now, I will leave questions about who you're gonna charge what to another point. Let's just say, for the sake of you know, being egalitarian, we're gonna charge everyone the same thing. But I hope you can see that as you change the amount, and we're gonna explore this in a second, as you change the amount that you charge per sale, you're gonna change the amount of profit that you've got. Do you agree with that? Have a think about this for a second, okay? Um, I've got a vertical axis here, and I've got that horizontal axis somewhere near the middle. I hope you can see that if, for example, I charged nothing <laughs> per sausage, what's gonna to happen to my profit? Ooh, what profit? It's gonna be, yeah, what profit is a good way to say it. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be negative. Do you see that? Why is it negative? You're, not making, you're in debt. I'm, I'm in debt because I had to pay money to buy the bread, to buy the meat, and then, and then I didn't make any uh, money back to offset that, right? Make sense? Okay. But at a certain point, if I increase, as we go to the right, if I increase, at a certain point, um, I make zero profit. What would we call that, by the way? Who studies economics here? This is the name. This is the break even point. Thank you. Okay. So it's like, at some amount, by the way, what would you guess it is? I'm just curious what you think. Just to break even, not to make any profit, how much do you think you've got to sell one sausage, one piece of bread? Two dollars. Oh, $2? Really? $2. Who's bought a, a loaf of bread recently? No. None of you. Okay. Um, so a loaf of bread costs what? It was $1.27 at Aldi for a white toast loaf. A dollar twenty-seven. It's got like 20 slices in it? You know what? So that's like uh, six cents for the bread. Six cents for the bread? And then you got the sausage. I reckon well, it was pretty cool. You said 50 cents, right? Somewhere around there. Okay, let's just. I haven't put any numbers in here intentionally because I actually don't know the numbers. Okay? <laughs> yes, but for everything that I buy, I'm going to sell it for the same amount that I bought it for, right? Just. I'm just trying to illustrate. Yeah, well. Oh, oh don't worry. My business is coming. Okay, so, so clearly I don't want to just break even, right? So if I increase what I sell for, then I'm going to make more profit. This makes sense, of, of course, right? But, but here's, here's where I'm getting to, right? At a certain point, as you keep on raising prices, your profit starts to level out, right? Um, in fact, I'm going to argue that it doesn't just level out. I actually think if you start charging too much, you start making less profit. Can you? Give me a suggestion as to why. People aren't going to buy it because $70. <laughs> You're like, I, I think it comes way earlier. I want you to have a think, right? At what point would you walk past a sausage and you're like, that's too expensive, I'm not buying that. Anyone have a think? <laughs> past $2.50, wow, you have a low threshold, Zachy, okay? I actually think $2.50 is very common, but maybe you're like, I see $2.50, I don't have like 50 yeah, cents, right? Okay, what do you like, think, Sren? It's like, if Coke's like $3, but then 
someone charges four of them, you're gonna go, oh yeah, let me buy the four dollar one. Right, okay, okay. And then there's like more complicated questions like, does it include onion, you know, are they general, all the rest, right? And then I'm gonna say, actually, at a certain point, it just completely drops off because you're like, this is ridiculous, this is extortion, I don't care about democracy, so it, right? Okay. Um, well, if you make your, if you raise your price so high that no one buys, then you've 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 had to pay to get all the stuff, and then you haven't. Yeah, right. No, no, no. This is this is not about time. This is not about time. This is about how much we charge for each one. So one sausage you break even. Right. It's a two hundred dollar sausage. Okay. All right. So. I wonder if your brain is connecting what we've been doing over the last little while no. with this situation, okay? Because no. what we're wanting is to get to this spot, up the top, right? That's where like, this is my ideal situation. But we have a name for this, right? We would call this a, it's a stationary point, not just any stationary point, it's a, it's a maximum turning point. It's a maximum turning point, thank you, okay. So we're trying to find this maximum turning point. So calculus here can help us, right? Situations all around, not just you know silly ones like this, um, operate like this. You can change one thing and it affects you. Go up and then you're like, oh, now you want to go down, or vice versa. Maybe you want to minimize something, right? You want the lowest number of infections when you go out for a rally or something like that, right? You do all these kinds of things to try and affect your situation. Okay. So this category of problems is called an optimization problem, because we're looking for an optimal solution. What's the amount you charge to get to the maximum amount of money? Okay. Now, um, we're going to do a little bit of theory today, because these problems are very much like, they're going to use all the knowledge that we've developed over the last couple of weeks, but there's two key differences, and you might want to jot these down okay, under the heading of optimization. Okay. In addition to everything we already know about calculus, number one, because these are actual situations, right? Because these are actual situations, sometimes, like it's not just some random, here's an equation, off you go, find me stationary points and all the rest. Because these are real situations, sometimes there are real constraints that act upon the situation that give you some kind of limitation. I'll give you an example right now. Just look up for a second, okay? You may have a situation where, for instance, you can't just charge whatever you want. You might only be allowed to charge within a certain range. For example, um, <laughs> this is a hyper example, but if you are running a Bunnings barbecue, you can't just charge, you know, I'm going to charge 10 bucks or 50 cents, right? They actually are very stringent about how much you can charge, right? So there may be constraints that make you say, okay, uh, you're only allowed to charge this much. So therefore you have to change your decisions, right? Now have a look at my situation here. Suppose this orange section is where you're allowed to charge, okay? It's like I'm going to restrict your dollars per <laughs> individual sausage sale, right? In this case, the, the stationary point is irrelevant, isn't it? Because it's above what you're allowed to charge, right? So wouldn't it follow that if what I'm looking for is the optimal solution in this situation, if that orange section is all I'm allowed to work within, then the actual optimal solution is not at the turning point. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's what we call an endpoint, right? Because you're like, oh, that's where my situation ends. It's like a, it's a domain restriction, okay? Um, so that's where I'm allowed to go. So that's the first difference, and we're going to talk about that in a second. And then the second difference is, unlike in situations where you just get handed, here's, here's the equation, off you go, start differentiating, right? Often this thing, which we would call the model for your situation, you have to construct this thing yourself. You've got to create the equation by looking at the situation and like looking at the geometry of it or looking at the situation. Like I haven't given you an equation for this thing. Right? I mean, it looks kind of like a parabola, but it looks like also weird and wobbly, a little bit less like a parabola. So you have to construct this thing and that takes its own amount of thought. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. 